Viruses are famous for being bad news, harbingers of disease and death. But the truth is that there's so much more than disease-causing machines. Some viruses are so vital to their host's survival that the host literally cannot live without them. Some viruses may have triggered huge leaps in evolution. In fact, we have retroviruses to thank for our very existence. Retroviruses turned egg layers into live bearers, aka placental mammals, like us, horses, dogs, cats, whales, and a lot of other species. According to one recent theory, viruses may even be the missing link between the evolution of complex multicellular life from one-celled organisms. Some viruses can also give their hosts amazing abilities to quickly adapt to extreme environmental changes. For us, this could be a very useful thing, considering the changes that we're seeing in Earth's climate due to climate change. So let's see how these viruses are actually useful, one by one, starting with the viruses important to humans. Did you know? The 5 to 8% of your DNA comes from retroviruses? That's been the case in humans and primates for tens of millions of years now. These bits of viral DNA came into our genomes through infections, possibly pandemics, that took place millions of years ago. It affected the germline or the reproductive cells of our ancestors. And that's also why these viral DNA bits have been passed down from one generation to the next for millions of years. So there is a natural mechanism by which viruses, especially a family called retroviruses, insert themselves into the DNA of a living cell and make the sequence heritable for all future generations of the infected animal or person. This process is called endogenization. A popular theory is that endogenous retroviruses actually represent a plague culling event. So endogenization brings immunity to an otherwise deadly virus, and only those with the endogenized retrovirus actually survive. There are some really interesting examples of this kind of evolution going on as we speak in koalas and sheep, something we're going to discuss in more detail in the second part of this video. Coming back to people. What do these endogenous remnant bits of viral DNA do in our body? We know they contribute to a diverse range of proteins naturally made by the body. Some are even part of our normal functioning, like the placenta formation in humans and other mammals. Some remnants have morphed to serve entirely new functions, like shaping the innate immune response in humans while some endogenous retroviral sequences activate the immune system, others suppress it. Our body has millions and millions of viruses that kill bacteria. They're called bacteriophages, and our digestive, respiratory, and reproductive tracts are loaded with them. These phages live in the mucus lining, a physical barrier that acts as a defense against microorganisms and other external factors. Bacteriophages were discovered in 1915, and ever since, they've been used to treat bacterial infections in animals and humans. This is because phages have a unique ability to infect bacteria without actually affecting the human or animal host. In recent years, Phage therapy has made a huge comeback. Globally, the decline in the effectiveness of antibiotics because of multi-drug resistance has renewed the interest in phage therapy to treat bacterial infections. Phages are now used as an alternative or as a supplement to antibiotic treatment for dysentery, sepsis caused by certain bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus, Salmonella, and skin infections. That was a look at naturally beneficial viruses in our body. Next, we're going to look at some benefits that viruses offer in medicine.
some viruses can infect and kill tumor cells. Oncolytic viruses, as they're called, are viruses in nature and others modified in a lab that can actually infect and multiply inside cancer cells without harming healthy ones. Since the 1950s, natural adenoviruses have been used to treat advanced cervical cancer with some success. Genetically engineered versions of the herpes virus have also been used with some success in treating advanced cancers. Herpes virus is also the only viral therapy that's been approved by a health authority, the US FDA, for treating a serious form of skin cancer called melanoma. Researchers are also exploring the possibility of an oncolytic Rio virus delivered intravenously that can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter brain tumors and kill tumor cells. The Peggy virus infects humans but doesn't cause any disease. Instead, in people with HIV, the Peggy virus has been shown to extend lifespan. Research is still underway to understand exactly how it affects the immune system and what causes this effect of prolonging survival. So as you can see, there's a lot that viruses can do, both natural and engineered, in the realm of treatment, with better tools and precision in gene editing now possible. The scope of viruses in medicine is only going to get bigger and better from here. So let's go wider and look at some positive effects that viruses have on animals, plants and insects. The koalas of the world are undergoing a wave of evolution right now. It has something to do with an infection by the koala retrovirus. This virus is becoming endogenized into koala DNA just like in our human ancestors all those millions of years ago. Koalas in the northern part of Australia have the endogenous retrovirus, but animals from some areas of southern Australia do not. The retrovirus is completely missing in the DNA of koalas in the Kangaroo Island, which has been relatively isolated since the 20th century. So researchers are keeping a close eye on how this phenomena actually plays out for two reasons. One, it's an opportunity to study how endogenization of retroviruses actually works in real time. And two, it may be essential to prevent the koalas from going extinct, since it's only those animals with the endogenized retroviruses that are likely to survive. Like the koalas, Sheep are also undergoing a similar evolution right now. The jug seeked sheep retrovirus, JSRV, normally causes a contagious form of lung cancer in infected sheep. But evolution has caused sheep cells to endogenize the virus and co-opt with it for important biological functions. The endogenized JSRV virus has a hand in normal development of sheep placenta and it also protects the animal from related retroviral infections. Sheep are also in the middle of this process of endogenizing GSRV, so it will be a long while before equilibrium is reached and the evolution is complete. And now to plants. Viruses help a lot of different plants cope with stress, especially biological forms of stress like infection. There is a family of pararetroviruses that are endogenized in many plants including tomatoes. So, tomato plants that have the endogenous pararetrovirus do something different. They make what's called small interfering RNA or siRNA a tiny piece of RNA that blocks specific parts of the DNA and doesn't allow proteins to actually be made from it. The siRNA gives the plant an antiviral defense against infectious retroviruses and their relatives. This advantage 
is only available to those tomato plants that have the endogenous paroretrovirus. And now to the geothermal soils of Yellowstone National Park in the USA. There's panic grass that goes there called Dicanthelium languinosum. It can grow at soil temperatures of over 50 degrees Celsius, but only because it has some help. The plant has a symbiotic relationship with a fungus called Calvillaria protuberata to survive at this temperature. The fungus in turn needs a virus, Calvillaria thermal tolerance virus, to withstand this 50 plus degrees Celsius soil. The virus essentially makes it possible for the fungus as well as the grass to withstand the extreme temperatures at Yellowstone. And now to insects. Parasitic wasps called braconids use bracoviruses as biological weapons to infect their victims, caterpillars. The viruses suppress the caterpillar's immune system and tweak its metabolism to favor the growth of the wasp. The wasps are accidental genetic engineers, implanting the genomes of their caterpillar victims with their own viral DNA. So one insect is genetically modifying another insect with viral genes through a sting. But an interesting twist can also play out here, where the caterpillar steals the viral genes and incorporates them into its own DNA. This actually protects the caterpillar from other viruses. In both cases, the insect with the endogenous virus tends to have the distinct advantage. That marks the end of our list, and the takeaway is clear. Viruses are powerful agents of positive change in evolution and nature. There are so many that I couldn't include here, simply because research too appears to have a similar bias about viruses being bad news. There's so much research about the diseases caused by viruses, which is a great thing, but at the same time, there's not enough money and human interest going in to study the positive contributions of viruses to nature and society. We'll get a virologist on the podcast and discuss this in more detail. But I do hope you can see that viruses don't all deserve a bad rap. Some of them, COVID-19 especially, are going down in history as notorious, and rightfully so. But there's also a lot of do-gooder viruses out there that deserve more recognition, don't you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. There's so much more about nature and several other topics coming your way on Biotic. So if you like this video, stay tuned. Have yourself an awesome day. Until next time, this is Kavya signing off.